Hello, good afternoon. Um, so in the last few weeks of the class, we'll be going back to Russell's notion of acquaintance in one way or another. And um, I want to begin today by uh, looking back at where we've got to with the notion of truth in an account of meaning, and uh, then look at main topic um, today and next time, multiple object tracking and experiments that Pollution, the psychologist then in Pollution has done on multiple object tracking and say why they might be relevant to anything we are doing. Um, and I'll try and make out the case that I think Pollution is going for, that the visual, what he calls visual indexes, which are elements of the visual system in the brain might be the basis of reference in um, ordinary English. So let me begin by just where we've got to. I was saying last time, look, we could maybe acknowledge Wittgenstein's point that use is more basic than knowledge of truth conditions, that the basic thing is just what you do with your use of a language, that um, the pattern of use is more basic than knowing anything about what signs refer to. Um, but you could still say that in order to have a use of a sign that you can make any sense of, um, you must be able to give an account of what you're up to in your use of the sign. Uh, someone said a few classes ago, your objectives in using the sign. Um, you have to have some con picture in your mind of what makes a statement involving the sign true or false. So with Tonk, there's a use for the sign, all right. The use can be perfectly well described. But it's very difficult to make intelligible what you think you're up to when you're using the sign. Um, you can't have any truth table for it. You can't make any sense of what is going on there. So you could say, yeah, using the sign is the more basic thing. But you've still got to be able to say what it takes for uses of those signs and sentences to be true or false. So we have to be able to make sense of what it is to be going right or wrong when you're using the sign. Um, and you, we don't want to have to say uh, it's just agreeing with everyone else that makes your use of a sentence true or false. And we also want to be able to say some, some ways of using signs are systematically wrong. Tonk is like that. Maybe uses of offensive language are like that. Maybe there are other cases still. The kind of truth theory that we were looking at last time, when you say stating what has to be the case for the signs of a language, for sentences of a language to be true or false, a truth theory takes all the individual signs of the language, the basic vocabulary of the language, and gives you an axiom for each of them. Um, it gives you a sentence uh, the, 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 uh, for each sign, it states what that sign refers to or what it takes for that sign to apply to an object or something like that. And then you get all these SP pairings. S is true if normally a P for every sentence of your language from that basic set of axioms. Davidson's take was when you're giving this kind of theory, so suppose you think, well, we need this kind of statement of truth conditions to make it intelligible to ourselves what we're up to when we're using language what our objectives are when we're using language. Um, then Davidson's line was, all the theory has to do is crank out all the true statements of the form, S is true if and only if P. So if you've got two theories that both crank out those same theorems, then there's no real difference between them. It doesn't make any sense to wonder if one's right or one's wrong. So if you had the theory that says, Raleigh refers to the place one mile west of Raleigh, and Isaac refers to the place one mile west of Isaac, and the predicate smoke supplies to X if the person one plate mile, if the person one mile east of place X smokes, and fishes applies to a place X if the person one mile east of X fishes. Well, that's going to give you the same SP pairings as the theory that says Raleigh refers to Raleigh, Isaac refers to Isaac, and smokes applies to X if X smokes, fishes applies to X if X fishes. 
Um, they'll both give you uh, theorems like that. So according to Davidson, there's no difference between this kind of theory that says Raleigh refers to the place one mile west of Raleigh and a theory that says Raleigh refers to Raleigh. That was where we got to last time. And last time, the note we ended on was, that can't be right. Um, we do give meanings to the signs of our language a word at a time. You learn a word like Raleigh by being introduced to Raleigh, by being told, here's Raleigh, uh, and not by encountering the place one mile west of Raleigh. There's something about the way that perception comes in to your learning of individual words. You learn names, signs for particular objects by seeing those objects, by encountering those objects. That's the most basic case. You learn predicates by seeing objects that they apply to. Um, so what we really need is what we haven't really addressed so far, an account of how perception might work in your learning individual words, how perception might, give you, get, might play a role in letting you learn what individual words stand for or how sentences containing them are true or false. We haven't really looked at that yet. Th that's what I think we've gone, got to. Uh, we're going to get knowledge of truth conditions derived from knowledges of, knowledge of the references of the signs. That's going to give us our knowledge of what we're about, what our objectives are, what we're doing in our use of language. Okay, so that was quite fast. If, if you weren't, well, <laughs> by my standards, that was quite fast. Um, uh, this is your chance to pause if you're not completely abreast with absolutely everything so far. Yeah? Can I go back aside? Yeah, I can do that. Okay. Any advance in one slide? <laughs> So where we've got to is basically <laughs> right close to where we started out, namely looking for some statement as to what it takes to know for a sign to refer refers to know that a sign refers to a particular object. That's really what we're looking for at this point. Yeah. We have, of course, a much deeper understanding of the, the question, but it's actually the same question. <laughs> <laughs> we do, I promise you, <laughs> have a much deeper understanding of the question. But it is actually the same question we started out with. Yeah? Okay. Okay, so um, Pelishin, um back in the late 90s, did a suite of experiments, a whole set of experiments that continue to this day on um, what he calls multiple object tracking. So... Um, what goes on in multiple object tracking is quite easy to state. In multiple object tracking, you're shown a screen containing between 12 and 12. This is the, the basic cases. It all gets quite complicated later on. But um, you're shown a screen that contains a whole bunch of simple, identical objects. Some of them flash. And you're told the ones that flash, they're yours. Keep tabs on them. And then they all start to <coughs> move around in unpredictable ways. At the end of the thing, um, one of them flashes, and you're, to you're asked, um, was that one one of yours? So here's a start, right? So you've got all these targets on the screen in front of you. Four of them flash. Then they all start to move around. One of them flashes, and you're asked, was that one of yours? OK, I, I, should, I, I may as well admit at this point, I, I have looked at about a million of these demonstrations, and I can never do them at all. So I, I'm not actually a great help to you in, in actually giving hints and tips as to how to do this. But um, let me see if I can. Um, uh, this is um, a demo from Polition's website. If you Google Polition, uh, multiple object tracking, you can find about a million of these demos online. Um, and uh, OK, are you, are you all set? Four of them will flash. They're yours. Uh, and I, I, I say right at the start, I, I, I can't do this at all, so I'm not even going to try this one. 
Um, uh, and I won't be able to help you at the end with telling you whether you're right, whether you've succeeded. So it's kind of frustrating from that point of view. But um, <laughs> with all those provisos in mind, OK, here we go. Here we go. Okay, as I said, I can't be. Uh, can you put your hand up if you thought you had managed to do that pretty well? Wow. Which one was the end? Um, this demo doesn't have an end flashing. Th th this is his only demo of the basic case, and it doesn't do the end flashing. <laughs> I'm sorry. Right. Um, um, if I had the skills, I would manipulate it myself, but I, I don't. <laughs> and in fact, I wouldn't even know which one was. <laughs> yes, okay. Was this one? One of yours? Yeah. Wow. Was this one one of yours? Yeah. Was this one? Yeah. This one? Yeah. What about this one? No. Jesus, that's impressive. <laughs> I'm, I'm suitably thunderstruck. Okay. <laughs> one of you guys should take over at this point. <laughs> I, know, I promise you I never have the slightest idea. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, okay. <laughs> right. um, okay, there are a, a number of points to bear in mind here. This is um, a very uh, uh, abstract kind of demonstration, right? But it is clearly a real-world skill, this you know, I, I'm told that when you do this with football players, I mean, um, people, people whose main jo whose day job is playing football, um, they do put really well at it. Right? And you can see why, you know, if you're in the habit of keeping tabs of, what, you know, some particular fast-moving objects in a whole array, this is going to be easier. Or if you think about um, a mother of three on a shopping expedition with three children and a small dog um, and keep, keeping tabs on them, you, you, you know what I mean? You, you can see that in just a million real world situations, this is going to be important. It's not just a skill that's exercised on um, uh, abstract dots, uh, right? Uh, you need this in everyday life um, if you're going to keep tabs on your friends and your enemies and so on. Um, uh, okay, that, that's one basic point. Another is, um, Think about, you guys did that pretty well, right? I, 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 <laughs> um, uh, probably slightly better than most of the population, but people are actually, I'm told, generally pretty good at this. Um, not perfect, but much better than chance. Yeah. Um, so how are you doing it? How did you manage that? In order to do that, you had to um, tag each of these four right at the start. Right? You, had to get, you had to get them tagged somewhere or other. And um, then at the end, say whether that was the same one. Now, did you do it by saying, oh, that's the red one? That's the square one? I mean, none of these qualitative properties of the thing are really any good, right? Because they're all exactly the same, right? So you did not do it by forming a qualitative description of the thing and saying, that's the one I'm trying to keep tabs on. Um, so if you remember, um, Frege on a uh, sense. You, you had a singular term there. You had four singular terms tagging each of those four objects. And in Frege's terms, there had to be some sense, some way you were being given the thing. Um, but what was your way of being given the object? It wasn't by getting a description of it, because they're all actually very similar. There's no description that really differentiates them one from another. Um, you might say, well, what I, the description I had in mind was the one at this place or the one at that place. But if you remember how fast that went, um, you couldn't possibly have been doing it by um, explicitly framing the description at each point. 
the one at this place, the one at notes at this place, notes at that place, notes at that place, notes at that place. Right, to cycle backwards and forwards between the four of them, framing all these descriptions. Right, <laughs> I mean, you guys are clearly better than me, but you're not that good. Right, you did not do it. I, I, I don't believe you did it by doing that. Right, you can't do it by just framing new, fresh descriptions the whole time. So, there was some kind of tagging you did there that was more primitive than any descriptive identification of the object. There was some kind of primitive tag you had that was locking onto the object without a Phrygian sense. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, okay, so that's just going over what the result is, that um, people can do it for up to about five targets. It kind of peters out around five. Um, now, that's the first main point. When you're keeping track of your target, you're not doing it by having a description of your target. Yep? Can we go back to what you were just saying about we don't necessarily change our descriptions? Right. Right. Yeah. It wasn't perfect, but I did notice myself actually pulling many descriptions. Yeah. Okay, th 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 that's really interesting. M m m um, maybe you were managing like that. The idea of the experimenters is that um, uh, when you're s switching, um, uh, if you try to do it by switching attention from one of these to the other as you're going through it, then. Um, uh, the idea is that the switch of attention, cycling from here to here to here to here, well, you, the, the, you can measure how fast people can switch attention backwards and forwards between targets. Yeah. And the idea of this going so fast is to speed it up to the point that this can't be the basic strategy you're using. So I think the, um, the right analysis of what you're describing would be there was some more basic skill keeping track of these targets, and at various points in the task, you were managing it. You know, you pause here and there and say, where are they now? Uh, and you keep a kind of log of the interim positions. But it's not by continually updating the log that you're keeping track of them. Do you see what I mean? Um, it's, it's not by continuously saying, now it's here, now it's a bit to the right, a bit to the right, a bit, uh, yeah. Your fundamental skill was to keep track of, track of them without the descriptions, and then you were recovering descriptions at various points en route. But that depends on the more basic skill. It's not what explains how you have the more basic skill. Does that sound? OK. Um, OK, so this looks like um, a, a real world skill that we have. Um, where you can in a laboratory show that people are not doing this by framing descriptions of the objects they're keeping track of. So this was the kind of thing we were looking for when talking about Russell. Some way of identifying objects that does not involve having modes of presentation or descriptive identifications of the objects. This is Pollution's, uh, Pollution explaining exactly what he thinks is going on. So. Um, this is uh, a machine that models the visual system. Okay, now, okay, follow me very closely. The idea is, this is the basic inputs into your visual system. Um, I mean, low-level visual processing early in the brain. Um, so all this stuff, all, 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 all this stuff, all, all your retina is being hit by millions and millions of impacts simultaneously. Um, and then it's all being processed, uh, so you figure out where the colors are, where the shapes are, where things are moving, and so on. And um, up here, upstream in the visual system, you have four or five tags, just four or five tags. And for one reason or another, some of the objects, information about which is being processed down here, attract tags. Right? And once an object in front of you has attracted a tag, um, uh, well, it is hooked up to one button or another here. Right? Uh, um, 
uh, a bulb will light when the button has attracted a tag. OK? Th that all right? See, the, 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 this is your basic ways of identifying objects. Now, you do this without knowing any of the properties of the object. And now, if you want to ask, so if you want to ask of one of your targets as you were going through that demonstration, is it square? What color is it? What you do is you have all these property detectors here. Um, um, and uh, uh, suppose th th this might be, let's say, an is it square detector. And um, if you want to know whether one of the things you're keeping tabs on is square, has it changed shape? Has it become a diamond in the course of this trial? Then what you do is you push this button here for the thing you're trying to keep tabs on. And you push the is it square detector simultaneously. As Pollution wisely says, you need two hands to operate this machine. Um, so you push the button of the tag you're inquiring about, for the object you're inquiring about, and you push your square detector. And if it's not square, the button does not light, the, the lamp there does not light up. But if it is square, can you guess what happens? I can see you're on the edge of your seat. <laughs> the lamp goes on, right? Um, so the point here is you've tagged all these objects in advance of knowing any of their properties. If you want to find out any of their properties, that comes later. And in fact, when people are doing this kind of task, um, th there are variants of this task where all the targets change shape or color. They may become animals. They can do really startling things. They may change from being one kind of animal to being another, um, change color quite dramatically in the course of the trial. And people just don't notice. You just can't tell. Um, so that just rams home the point that this way of tagging all the objects is more primitive than getting any of their properties. So it's more primitive than any um, descriptive identification of the object, more primitive than any kind of sense or mode of presentation of the object. It's a simple tag, a simple, what Russell would have called a logically proper name, a proper, proper name. Just a simple tag for an object going on there in your visual system. When you say, here's Justin, what you're doing is um, having Justin attract a tag like that. And then you're giving that the, the verbal name, Justin. Okay? Um, and if you want to know about any of Justin's properties, that comes next. That's when you hit the buttons here. Is that perfectly clear how the, the, the mechanism is meant to work? That, that is meant to be just a description of ordinary vision. So the picture is you've got about five of these visual indexes um, in your brain, in the visual system. Um, each of them can be assigned to a particular object in your visual field. That's tagging the object. And as Pollution puts it, that's giving you a way to name or refer to individual parts of a scene independent of their properties or locations. I don't actually know if this really helps. <laughs> I'm just going to diagram. <laughs> But um, uh, it's actually a very Fedorian picture of this. Um, here is your eye. Here is your brain. In the visual, sy in, in the visual system, in the brain, you are constructing um, uh, representations of complicated objects around you um, and the relations between them. So if I'm looking at the configuration of the class right now, I'm looking at who is configured where. Um, then uh, you're looking at these relations between the parts. Um, and each um, person out there is attracting an individual tag. And then you're looking at that configuration. If you are, for example, a policeman looking at a demonstration, and 
wondering, <laughs> wondering what is going to happen next, then um, that's a kind of, uh, uh, all you're doing is tagging as many blocks as you can and looking at and your visual system is doing an analysis of the relations between them. One way to think of this is that it's giving you, um, is making explicit what's going on when you attend to something in a scene. So that in vision, on the one hand, there's the whole teeming stream of consciousness coming in, all, 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 all this multitudinous detail coming in, and then on the other hand, there are just the parts of the scene you're attending to, and attending to a part of the scene is maybe just the same thing as having it attract one of these indexes. Yep. Uh, these are um, just aspect. Uh, th these are um, tags in the representation. Th these would be visual indexes. Yeah. Yeah, these are the objects they're identifying. OK. okay. Um, now, this is actually a very fertile idea, this, the, the, this idea of volitions. This has, the, 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 this general, the, this has lots of applications. Um, uh, I, I think it's most important is the kind of theory of reference application. But it's a familiar point that um, if a, uh, Let's see, I don't have any examples here, but if you hold up, if you're looking at a group of objects and say there are three or four there, you can look at a bunch of objects and if there are three there or if there are four there, can you tell at a glance whether it's three or four? Yes, you can tell at a glance whether there are three objects there or four objects there. If there are 18 or 19 objects there, can you tell at a glance whether it's 18 or 19. <laughs> well, in my case, anyway, you, you can't, right? And most people can't do that, right? If it's 18 or 19, you have to go 1, 2, 3, 4. You have to do a count, right? So why is that? How come you can do 3, 4, or 5 objects at a glance, but 18 or 19, the thing just packs up on you? There must be some explanation of why that is. Um, is it that when you do the three or four at a glance, you're just counting very fast? Well, um, th this is called subitizing, this doing it at a glance, when you see the number at a glance. And the idea is, um, is because you have those four tags, um, you can tag one, two, three, four, and uh, throw your tags and keep track of your tagging operations. That's why you can do up to three or four or five, because that's how many tags, you, visual indexes you have. That's how many tags you have in your visual system. Um, beyond that, when you're doing the count, you, you have to do a manual count. Um, you can't just rely on your tags to do the count for you. Um, there are these stories about uh, little known um, tribes that can only count up to three, uh, right? I mean, maybe they're not as popular as they used to be, but. Uh, the, 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 these tribes that do one, two, three, four, and then after that it's just a lot. Um, and uh, uh, I, don't know, <laughs> I don't think that's ever been demonstrated that, there, that these people actually exist. But um, small children certainly go through a phase that's like that, where they can do one, two, three, up to, up to three or four. And then after that they just pack up. They don't really get the number words beyond three or four. Um, so why is that? Why should there be that stage in your learning of number words? Why should it be that there's a stage where it goes one, two, three, four, many, um, before you get to going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and so on? Well, um, uh, because um, when you're learning number words, what you're doing is you're learning to count your visual tags. That's, the, that's phase one of learning number words, where you go one, two, three, four. Um, and then it's a separate phase in learning the number of words to get beyond that, to crack what's happening after that. Or another way in which this is a fertile idea is um, children are <coughs> popularly supposed to go through phases in learning about physical objects. So um, uh, if um, you take an object 
Here I have a simple object, and you hide it. Uh, children are said to have a lot of trouble with the idea that it's the same object uh, when it's recovered after having been hidden, right? So they're thought to have this problem with their parents <laughs> in particular, right? That's a real challenge, right? I mean, if, if, if it's not... How can it be the same object if it, if it disappeared, right? Um, well, you can think of phases in learning the object concept, learning that concept of an object that sticks around, can disappear from view, and then come back, as training your use of visual indexes, training in the visual system, so that um, uh, a more a fancier version of this test will involve the objects going behind occluders, right? So you might have barriers here that, the, that you, the targets you're trying to keep track of disappear behind. And then the question would be, are you managing to keep track of them? Um, people do manage to keep track of, I should have put one of these up actually, but people do manage to keep track, uh, do the task pretty well, even when the objects are going behind occluders. So that idea of the, uh, being the same object, even though it's disappeared for a while, is built into your use of those tags. It can be trained into your use of those tags. Okay. So this is a very fertile idea, th 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 this idea of tags in the visual system, um, in a lot of different ways. Yep? Yeah. At a glance, you can see that they're all the same color. At a glance, you can see that they're all the same color. Yeah, very good, yeah. Um, The objects outstrip the tags. Very good. Yeah. So we can apply a property without having the tags. That's right. You can apply a property without uh, without applying the. Uh, well. Um, what you're doing? Uh, 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 yeah, I, yeah, I strongly agree. I, I, I wish. I, uh, um, you can see that every every word there is black, for example. Yeah. Um, without having to count them all or tag them all. Yeah. Um, um, and that is a good point. Um, so one way of thinking of what you're doing when you say they're all black there is, well, you're saying this one's black and this one's black and this one's black, and it's some big conjunction, right? But, and, and, and then that really would be mysterious on this account, because how, how come you've got 50 tags there? Yeah? Or however many words there are there, letters there are there. Um, but uh, I think that's not quite the right way to think of it. What you've got is... Um, all these shapes, right? And what you've done is you've lifted out all these shapes simultaneously and said, that whole area is black, right? So there's just one large discontinuous area here, yeah? And you said the whole thing's black. You, you, you see what I mean? You haven't really noted each object and taken them all one by one. You've lifted out all that region simultaneously of all the letters and said, that whole region is black. Yeah? That's a, anyway, that's a uh, at any rate, that's an analysis that would explain what's going on here. Yeah? Yeah? Hey, uh, can I ask uh, what you think? Yeah. Um, what about, uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure, are there, are there like um, savants of some sort who can like, glance at like 50 objects, 50 some objects? And Isn't that interesting? Yeah. And say that's 50? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're way ahead of me. Every, every, everything you said there, was just, I, I was just a few hundred milliseconds behind. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I don't know of any cases. Do you guys know? I, I haven't come across any cases like that. I don't see why there shouldn't be. I mean, usually when you can think of a case like that, it turns out there is someone somewhere in Bulgaria or somewhere who really uh, has, has this capacity and been... Um, but... Um, I, 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 haven't, I, I haven't come across that. But if, if, if you did, then I think on the face of it, it would be very baffling how they were managing to do it in this analysis. But I, I agree, my reaction would be just exactly like yours, that what they're doing is some kind of grouping that you say, um, well, let's see, and you throw your five indexes and you say, bang, 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 e each row has got five in it. Um, there are five rows, therefore that's 25, right? And now there are three blocks like that, yeah. Um, and so it's re repeat grouping and so on. Th that, that, that would be 
my first reaction too, that you could try and explain it in those terms if you found that phenomenon. Yep. Yep. More things at once. Yeah, the, the thing is, uh, that would be the other analysis, that um, maybe someone is born with just 50 tags in their visual system. Yeah, and uh, I don't see why not. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it might be a bit confusing um, in, in ordinary life if you were managing to keep track of so many things simultaneously. But, um, you know, because, yeah. Um, but why not? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't see why that shouldn't happen. Th that would be another hypothesis. It would be more... How should I say it'd be more radical? Um, I mean, it would be more. It would involve more of a departure from what people usually do than just having some kind of speeded up version of this grouping that we all can do, in fact. But um, I don't see why that wouldn't be possible. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. I've I've never managed it at all. I, <laughs> but but I, I I and the thing is, I was told this thing about football players being very good at this. And in fact, what I was told was that football players were able to do up to ten targets um, simultaneously. But. Um, I've, I've never actually seen any um, written down empirical evidence of this. Um, all the studies I've seen have people topping out at about four or five. But uh, uh, so, so I don't know. My, uh, my knowledge peters out there. Um, uh, I have been told very authoritatively that this is possible verbally but, um, by, by, by someone who works in the area. But I've, I've never seen a study that um, bears that out. Though I have to say, I've never seen a study addressing just that thing about training either. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, so that's multiple object tracking. If you're interested, in, as, as I say, go on to Polition's, just Google Polition and uh, multiple object tracking. And you can, <laughs> you can have many happy hours um, uh, trying this with different uh, setups. Um, uh, one of the interesting things about this um, analysis is that uh, there are mistakes possible. Remember Dretschke talking about when you can make mistakes? You can make mistakes, after all, in your tracking of an object. Um, it didn't seem like anyone in the class was um, coming out against and saying no against everyone else, but it's clearly possible that you could make a mistake. Um, you think you're keeping track of the object, but actually you got it muddled up with something else. So uh, it could happen that um, when you're being asked, that one you were keeping track of, um, uh, what color is that, what shape is that, um, you might make a mistake about whether it was the object you think it is. Um, but what's the, where's the possibility of a mistake come from? That was a question we've been dis discussing the whole way along. Uh, what does it mean, a mistake? In what sense is it um, only right? Is it right only if the tag's keeping hold of the same object through the exercise? Where does that possibility of a mistake come from? Well, a natural thing to say is, um, look, th 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 go back to Dretschke. Um, just as you had the biological function of the magnetosome be, being to indicate um, the direction of oxygen-free water, you could say, well, this is what humans have. This is the hu a human analog of the magnetosome. Um, it's the biological function of a visual index to indicate where an assigned target is. That's what this is for. And that's why you have these things in your visual system. Just as the function of the heart is to pump blood, the function of the visual index is to keep a track of a particular object through an exercise. That's how come there can be going right or wrong, because there are these biological functions. Um, Or you might say, 
Well, if you had a causal connection set up at the start of the experiment, say when the four targets flash, or when you think um, uh, that's um, Henry Jr. over there, and you're keeping tabs on Henry Jr., um, you might think, well, when you get something else muddled up with it, that causal connection, the causal connection with the muddled up object, depends on the causal connection you'd set up earlier with the right object. You, you see what I mean? Um, uh, when Calvin is kind of trying to keep track of his mother and winds up following the wrong woman around the supermarket, um, then um, what has happened there is that he set up a causal connection between his mother and a tag. Um, the causal connection between this other woman and the tag is there only because of the earlier causal connection. There's an asymmetric dependence there in Fodor's terms. Yeah, so you could say, well, I don't even need to talk about biological function. I can explain how tags can be getting it right or wrong using asymmetric dependence. Whatever we exactly we say about that, you could say, look, tagging here is what Russell meant by acquaintance. Russell said, with acquaintance, we have a kind of connection to objects um, that is more primitive than any descriptive identification of them. And it's the foundation of your ability to think or refer at all. It's the basis of all communication. Um, and Russell said, well, you can be acquainted only with sense data. You can be acquainted only with your own immediate sensations. But this is giving you what Russell was talking about with, with acquaintance. What, was really, what really does the work in Russell's notion of acquaintance is the idea that it's more primitive than knowing any of the properties of the object. You connect to the object in a way that's more immediate, more direct than knowing any of its properties. And Russell thought, well, you can only do that with your sense data. But this is showing a way in which your visual system can be doing exactly that with ordinary medium-sized objects. Your visual system tags medium-sized objects. My visual system tags the same medium-sized objects. That's how come we can think and talk about them. That's really the basic phenomenon at the um, making communication possible this tagging of medium-sized objects. And all this is obviously naturalistic. The, 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 this is just brain biology in the end that we're looking at. So there's not, nothing here saying, um, well, it's ectoplasm. It is the spirit that does it. Right, right? This is all perfectly part of the physical world. Well, what, <laughs> what more do you want? What more have we asked for? This is an important idea. Yeah? Yes, um, that, that's what's happening here. The property, uh, ascribing the properties comes after the tagging. Yeah, but think about, think about this case. When you're keeping track, you didn't see that anything. Do you see what I mean? It's pretty difficult to do the keeping track. Um, and as, as I say, the basic finding there, one basic finding there is, and, and I'm sure there will be examples of this on the website, is that um, if these objects change color or change shape in the course of the uh, uh, experiment, people don't even notice you know, you're keeping tabs in a way that is more basic than seeing that anything. Yeah. Not just because I'm focusing on where the objects are. If I focus on what colors or shapes they are, then I'll notice that and not notice where they are. I w try it. Um, uh, I, I mean, the finding is people can't do it. You can tell them they're going to change color in the course of it. But if you, start, if you pause to look at the color, you actually can't keep tabs in the object anymore. Do you see what I mean? I mean, no, I this, is like this is demanding, this yeah, task. You're saying yeah. you have to tell the main object and yeah. notice color. I'm saying right. we're just, we're here, in this case, we're looking just where the object is. In the other case, you could just look at where, I mean, uh, what shape the object is. Isn't it just because we're focusing on one thing that we need to, like, actually notice that thing and disregard other things? 
Uh, well, see, if you do this slowly, yeah, then you could, uh, then you would say, you know, if, <laughs> if as we're talking right now, right, you're not noticing, you're not thinking, well, what is his biological species? But I promise you that if I suddenly changed into a lion or a centaur or something, you would notice. You, you, you see what I mean? It's not in general true that you only notice changes when you were looking out for what was going on with that dimension of the object. Okay, let's pick up on that next time. Uh, 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 I, uh, my sense is that we're right close to the end. Is that right? Okay. Okay. L l let's continue with this ne next time. So we'll do more in pollution um, on Wednesday. <laughs>